version of Latino Perspective. My name is Marty Ramirez, along with my co-host, Reynaldo Cervantes, here to begin to address issues affecting Latinos and Hispanics, past, present, and the future. Tonight, we want to address a topic that is profound in our life. It affects the way we think, the way we feel. However, in all my professional experience, I've never been at a forum, a meeting, or any activity that begins to look at the concept of Latinos and religion. And I find that rather fa fascinating in many aspects. Because it's a concept like gravity, So what is this concept of religion and its relationship to Latinos come from? As early as 204 BC, Romans created the term Hispanic to identify inhabitants from the Iberian Peninsula, which encompassed Spain and Portugal. And as you look at the transformation of the New World, it was the Spaniards and the Portuguese that came to this new world, <coughs> encountered the indigenous, and to whatever means necessary, incorporated a strong Catholic tradition. Nobody questions how they did it, but nevertheless, many Latinos, specifically Mexicanos, Mexican Americans, have been influenced by the Catholic religion. And as a result, other religions have evolved that now include, which I find kind of interesting, Pentecostals, Charismatic, that are finding their way into our Latino culture. But nobody really talks about it or wants to discuss, how, how did this happen? How could this be? You know, once a Catholic, one baptized a Catholic, you're always a Catholic. But before we get started, I'll turn it over to Reynaldo and give a few comments about this topic. Well, it, it's uh, it's a deep, deep subject, and you know, in our house, in our houses, Marty, there's two things we didn't discuss, and that's religion and politics. But here in our program, that's two things we discuss: is religion and and politics. Uh, an interesting, and I've never really discussed it with anybody was back when we first started uh, working on with the Chicano Awareness Center here in Omaha, back in the um, 70s. 70s. Uh, we're both born and raised Catholics. Uh, the Catholic Church was never, nowhere to be found during, during that time period. Actually, it was the Lutheran and some of the other churches that were 100% uh, behind the movement at that time and they, they had it not been for those uh, non-Catholic churches I don't think that the uh, Chicano Awareness Center would have survived those early days when they didn't have a, any uh, regular type funding like from United Way. I, did, I never made a connection between the movement uh, the Chicano movement and the fact that the church, at least here in Omaha, was not supportive of the movement. Uh, in fact, in many ways, the church and its leadership was against uh, the Chicano uh, Awareness Center, and they, they were even against uh, what was traditionally 
a English speaking mass. And when individuals from the Chicano Awareness Center uh, try to influence the church to, to create a, a, a Spanish speaking mass, there was a tremendous backlash to the point where there was physical violence uh, to keep that from occurring. So there was a, a cultural uh, issue there where we came, uh, from a religious perspective, we came head on to uh, what we were trying to do as self-identification and self-determination and how the church wasn't really in, in line with us as opposed to what was happening out on the West Coast with the Delano strikes and Cesar Chavez and how the church was really involved, you know, with uh, with the movement there and what was really happening in, in, in South uh, America too and the, the role of religion. Uh, but yeah, I think over the over the years, uh, after the after the blowouts, I would call them of the '60s, there's been uh, a tendency uh, for the church. I don't think they've they've been able to and flexible enough to change with the demographics, with the times, and so therefore, for whatever reason, and maybe you'll talk about that. That's that's left an opening or a a desire for for people who are still seek, seeking spirit and guidance uh, for other churches or other beliefs of the religions to come in and take advantage of the void that somehow the Catholic Church has left for whatever reason. And I think that that has resulted in a tremendous, tremendous growth of these non-Catholic uh, institutions. So <clears throat> we can spend a whole hour and then some just trying to define religion. But I'll give it my shot here. In some ways, <clears throat> religion is really a way of living, held in beliefs and worship in a superhuman controlling power via God. It has played a tremendous role in the lives of Latino and Hispanics. It shapes our guiding views and way of living. Through our culture as Latinos, religion runs in a deep spiritual vein. It is evidence in the language we use. Ojalá, si Dios quiere, meaning if God wills it, it will happen. I remember my mother always telling me, hijo, no te pudes, porque Dios te va a cuidar. In many parts, I'm still waiting for God, <laughs> you know, based on what my mother said. Te cuidar. <laughs> Bandito sea Dios, meaning praise the Lord. It's an abundant in our everyday languages. Mentioning God is a common occurrence among Latinos and trying to live a good Catholic life and in other religion is an ideal that we pursue. So, and then you bring in things like faith. What is faith? <laughs> faith is, I believe, something you hold on to without evidence. You know, as a Catholic, I have faith that hopefully I'll get to heaven, but I have no proof of heaven. And so you begin, begin to experience these concepts that I don't believe maybe when we went to catechism, the Catholic nuns tried to instill in this, but we were too young at that age. And so somehow you begin to negotiate your world with these strong beliefs and practices about religion. And now that change is happening. Again, most of what we're gonna speak throughout our show here is called change. And the changing demographics of the world and this country. The growth of this Latino population is really impacting churches throughout, even in this country. How is it that we now have a profound commitment to Spanish masses? In the Lincoln Diocese, 
but no longer a practice, our bishop used to send the priest to South America to learn the language and the culture of the immigrants that were coming to Nebraska and Lincoln. So it's not that the church has failed the Latinos, but I think you have with this thing called change, this generation, this new population doesn't seem to be content to sit in a Sunday mass or a Sunday worship activity and listen about the Bible, about what the disciples said, the apostles said. They want more, again, the human need. They want more. They want to hear about social justice issues. They want to hear about immigration. But for whatever reason, this does not happen. And based on the needs of a human, the Pentecostals, the Evangelicals, in their approach to worshiping and religion, they seem to be connecting to the Latino population. Sometime I read, if you ever want to see a mass exodus, <laughs> look at Latinos and the Catholic Church, where they are literally leaving this Catholic Church that nobody ever would have imagined. Again, it's not that they're losing their faith in God, but somehow other institutions, other religious affiliations are connecting, are meeting the needs, the psychological, the physical, the emotional needs, of this population. And yet, not that I should, but I don't hear of the local bishops in the state of Nebraska, the local priests in all our communities, talking to individuals about what is happening here. I think. Um you're, it, it's really uh, striking, to say the least, uh, about the attitude of the Catholic Church regarding the social issues, especially immigration. But beyond that, if I, if I have an opportunity to talk about Omaha and uh, the fact that Omaha is split up geographically into the south side, uh, which is predominantly where the uh, Latino community resides, mainly Mexican-American, uh, the recently arrived uh, immigrants from Mexico, S Central, Central American, and some South American. North Omaha is predominantly black or African-American. And then east of 72nd Street, or excuse me, west of 72nd, is predominantly white. Now, the, the Catholic diocese here, the Catholic Church, uh, has, has decided to shut down all of the old parishes here in, uh, in South Omaha, or many of them, okay? So they've, they've decided to, to take and, and, and shut some down and allow some to, it, and it's strictly on a money basis. It's, it's strictly uh, fiscal, you know, it's almost like a business. When the Catholic Church is one of the richest institutions in the whole world, but it's always been that way, uh, even with respect to immigration, it seems that, it seems that they're, and you said something that's very profound, it seems that their issues are, are more or less uh, uh, on economics as opposed to those nourishing uh, religious issues that where people want to hear about the plight, their condition, uh, they want hope, they want, they want people to give them uh, what the values are, the psychological conditions. I, uh, so, I mean, just to finish that, so why are we 
uh, taking our churches, all the churches east, west, excuse me, west of Seventy Second, they they have, you know, all kinds of money, and yet nobody's thinking about subsidizing when that's really the mission of the of the church. But but yet you have all these other non uh, the Pentecostals and the Charismatics. They got churches going up all over here. Now, how the heck can they afford it, and and not the Catholic Church? So that that's that's one take on it. The other is I was I was a little bit disturbed here a while back. We had a I was invited to a big meeting here at Our Lady Guadalupe uh, Hall. It was put on by OTOC, uh, which is a it's like a conglomeration, and they were talking about uh, immigration, immigration reform. And the leaders of this group were predominantly non-Catholic. There were some Catholic people there, but there was bishops and stuff from these other other Protestant groups. And it was it was a huge, big rally. And I heard really that the Catholics really didn't want to participate in in that rally. You know, which it bothered me. Of course, uh, I don't go to church. Although I am religious and I believe I'm a very spiritual man, my wife is more more uh, Catholic than I am. But it bothered me that I didn't realize that the Catholic Church was not nur nurturing the the their flock, you know, and I didn't know that they were flocking out uh, in droves, and and that's a little concerning, especially with the uh, with the with the data that you have here. So what do you think, uh, where are we going with this? Well, let me share a story. Back in the 60s, me and a young man by the name of Oscar Barraza went to a church. And you know when you go into a church, you kind of stop at the back to see where you want to sit. And somehow we, we found ourselves watching and observing that all the whites are going to one side of the church and the Mexicans were going to the other side. And I think I was just stunned because I had never experienced this. Years ago, and probably decades, I finally found a priest who was giving mass. And I said, Father, I have a question for you. This is what happened to us. Why did this happen? And why did you allow this to happen in this church? First of all, I think he was taken back. And I think he finally muttered, well, that's the way it is. Oh. <laughs> that's true. The, this concept <laughs> of follow the money. Mm -hmm. Years later, somebody shared and said, you know, Marty, religion, organized religion, is a business. You know? So back to this quest of, yes, I have spiritual needs, but I also am experiencing abuse in my marriage. And I don't need a priest to tell me, well, go home and, and endure it kind of phenomena. So my daughter shared with me in a church in Lincoln, Nebraska, said, the priest said, you know, if you get to heaven, I don't think you need a green card. And, and, and she said, he's beginning to now address <laughs> But this is an isolated priest? Why aren't all the priests in, the, in all dioceses beginning to address some of these issues? And I believe that many of the priests, in their kind-heartedness, in their dedication to spread the word of God, are very conscious. Ooh, you mean if I bring up immigration and how we should not tolerate it, I may lose? my funding, the church, or what the parents get from this, I think it's a part of that. We as Catholics in Nebraska get this Catholic newspaper called The Register. And I just shake my head, you mean I have to wait, <laughs> however, when it comes out, to find out where the church feels about immigration through a newspaper? Whereas every Sunday, uh, clergy of all denominations 
have an opportunity to begin to address this issue. So there's some concept to follow the money. <laughs> so Marty, let me just uh, say that this is going out live right mm -hmm. now in real time. And uh, we want you to know that if uh, you want to text us or contact us and have a question regarding this issue, uh, feel free to do it. My, my email is uh, latinoforum, that's L-A-T-I-N-O, F-O-R-U-M at cox.net and if you want to text uh, me and ask us some questions relevant to this topic uh, please please feel free to do so. Uh, moving on, on on this issue uh, uh, you're right on, on the it, 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 it seems that money trumps everything here but, but I, I, who, who's funding the Pentecostal churches or the charismatic churches? Right. It's, it's, uh, it, that's why I used to say the Lutheran church, uh, even today they have these, these, these grants and stuff that they give uh, to, to, the, to charitable organizations or 501c3s, and I don't know if the Catholics give anything uh, to those types of organizations. And aside from the gospel, I don't know what other type of uh, uh, format there is in the Catholic Church to talk about uh, issues that are not relevant to the, because uh, I know uh, they will every once in a while say, uh, vote for this person because he's uh, pro-choice or not pro-choice, I mean, he's against, you know, he's, he's for abortion or whatever. They'll get into that issue or the gay issue, but just in a, in a like in a passing, Matter of fact. They, they never get uh, heavy into the the ideology of that issue. So, uh, but I did not. Again, it, you're, you're surprising me when you say that people are leaving in droves from the from the Catholic Church because you would think that right now with we we went from 1993 having about uh, 35,000. Uh, Latinos, as they call them, in Omaha to in the Omaha area to now where we have over a hundred thousand, and in the state of Nebraska we're nearing two hundred thousand, which doesn't seem a, a lot, but percentage-wise it is a lot in terms of increase. And you know that many of those, I would say, a great percentage of them are because of the historical nature of the the religion probably started out as, as Roman Catholics. And I'll, I'll be honest with you, you and I, uh, we, were, we were taught by the Carmelite Sisters, the Order of the Carmelite Sisters. We went to uh, every catechism class. We, we attended every novena. We attended every, during Lent, every mass, every morning. And, uh, and you still turned out. <laughs> You still turned out the way you did, which is a pretty good Dr. Ramirez. So, uh, but I've heard some, uh, I mean, I'll tell you, I am moved by these charismatics and these Pentecostals. I really am. You know, they, they really go out there and they take that Bible and they, uh, of course, I had an experience during my, uh, you know, when I had, almost died in, in the hospital here, and I, and I had a, like an epiphany, and and it, it, I think I realized that there was a, a spirit, you know, a, a Holy Spirit, and it, it, it taught me that there was more to what's going on in the world and what to expect afterwards than what I had been taught to believe. And so I, I consider myself a highly spiritual individual, but I'm not confined to that indoctrination that you and I. Right. Received, and I'm not sure, you know, where that leaves us, you know, what the politics of that are, you know, in in the immigration uh, issue, and and how that's impacting our community here locally. I think with the charismatic and the Pentecostals, is that they want to engage 
they look as much to God as they do the Holy Spirit. So in these charismatic and Pentecostals, they engage in practices like speaking in tongues. And what is speaking in tongues? In my limited understanding, it's a way, it's a, a direct communication to God. Not necessarily, but I think traditional Catholic is like, what? You can't even understand them. That must be sacrilegious and how dare they? But again, who are you to judge what an individual tries to do to get closer to God kind of thing? So there is this called renewalist movement, these born again Christians phenomena, that somehow the human needs an element of religion. It seeks an element of faith, of truth, of reason. And whatever religion is out there that can sort of assist you, I'm not sure you're going to go to hell, which is another phenomenon. So this Holy Spirit has now risen to a, a new height for many Latinos and Hispanics in today's time. If I may switch a little bit to research, the Pew Hispanic Center, a Washington-based nonpartisan research organization, conducted a study in 2006, and I believe you can access it online. It conducted a study on Latinos and religion, the religious beliefs and the behaviors with politics and thinking among Latinos of all faiths. Let me just summarize a, a little bit. About one third of all Catholics in the United States are not Latino. And the Latino growth will continue to climb in this religion for decades. This demographic reality combined with distinctive characteristics of Latino Catholicism ensures that Latinos will bring about important changes in the nation's largest religious institution. And you can see that already throughout many communities. And new communities are beginning to welcome that. 